Mr. Hale, before I move things about, can you explain to Mr. Henderson just what you saw when you came here yesterday morning? Oh, by the way, has anything been moved? Uh, things just as you left me yesterday? It was just about the same. You know, when, I, when you dropped a little zero last night, I thought of Anderson Franklin instead of five for No use getting pneumonia with a big face on. You know, and I told him not to touch anything except this stove and what you know from it. Uh, somebody should have been left here yesterday. Oh, yesterday, I had to send Frank down to the Morris Center, but the man went crazy. Look, I just want you to know, I had my hands full yesterday. I knew you'd be back from Omaha by today, and as long as I went over everything here myself. Well, Mr. Hank, hey, just what happened when you came here yesterday morning? Harry and I started a town for a load of potatoes. We came along the road from my place, and as I got here, I said, I'm going to see if I can't get John Wright to with me on the party telephone now. I spoke to Wright about it once before. And he put me off. Same folks talk too much anyway. And all he asked was a piece of quiet. I guess you know how much he spoke himself, but I thought maybe if I went to the house and talked about it before his wife. So I said to Harry that I didn't know what his wife wanted made much difference to John. Let's talk about that later, Mr. Hale. I do want to talk about that, but tell now, it's just what happened when you got to the house. Oh, I didn't hear or see anything. I knocked at the door and still. It was all quiet inside. I knew they must be up. It was past eight o'clock, so I knocked again, and I thought I heard a voice say, come in. I'm not sure. I'm not sure yet, but I opened the door. This door, and there, in that rocker, sat Miss Wright. What was she doing? She was rocking back and forth. She had her apron in her hand and was kind of sleepy. And how did she look? Well, she looked queer. How do you mean queer? Well. As if she didn't know what she was going to do next. All kind of dumb up. And how did she seem to feel about your coming? Oh, I don't think she minded. One way or another, she didn't pay much attention. I said to her, how's it was right? It's cold, ain't it? And she said, is it? And just went on sleeping at her apron. Well, I was surprised. She didn't ask me to come to the stove or to sit down. But just sat there, not even looking at me. So I said to her, I want some John. And then she laughed. I guess she would call it a laugh. I thought of Harry and the team outside, so I said a little sharp. Can't I see John? No, she said. Kind of going. Take me home tonight? Yes, says she. Then why can't I see him? I asked her out of patience. Because he's dead, says she. Dead, says I. She just nodded her head. Not getting a bit too excited for rocking back and forth. Why? Where is he? says I, not knowing what to say. He just pointed upstairs like that. I got up with the idea of going up there. I walked from there to here. Then I said, What what he died of? He died of a local when I was next, says she. And just went on sleep that way. So I went out and called Harry. I thought I might need help. We went upstairs, there. She was, he was lying there. I think I'd rather have you going there upstairs, where you can point it all out. Just go on now with the rest of the story. Well, our first thought was to get the rope off. It was, ugh. But Harry, he went up to him and said, oh, he's 
dead all right. And we better not touch anything. So we went downstairs, and she was still sitting in that same way. Has anybody been notified, I asked? No, she said. Who did this, Miss Wright? said Harry. He said it's business. And she stopped cleaning up her apron. I don't know, she said. You don't know, says Harry? Yes, says she. Weren't you sleeping in bed with him last night? Yes, says she. But I was on the inside. Somebody slipped a rope around his neck and strangled him. And you didn't wake up, said Harry. I didn't wake up, she said after him. He must have looked as if he didn't see how that could be. For after a minute, she said, I could sound. Harry was going to ask her more questions, but I told him that we ought to let her tell her story first to the coroner or the sheriff. So Harry ran as fast as he could to the river's place where there was a telephone. And what did Mrs. Wright do as soon as you were gone to the coroner? She went from that chair to this one over here and just sat there with her arms held together and looking down. I knew that I ought to make some conversation. So I said to her that John wanted to put in a telephone. And at that, she started to laugh. And then she stopped and looked at me. Scared. I don't know. Maybe it wasn't scared. I wouldn't like to say it was. Soon, Harry got back, and Dr. Wood came, and you, Mr. Peters, and so I guess that's all I know that you don't. I guess we'll go upstairs first, and then out to the barn and around there. You're convinced there was nothing important there, nothing that would point to any motive? Nothing here but kitchen fans. He is a nice mess. She worried about that when it came so cold. She said the fire go out and it's like the cold. Well, can you beat the woman? No, for murder and worrying about her preserves. I guess before we're through here, she may have something more serious than preserves to worry about. Well, women are used to worrying over trifles. And yet, for all the worries, what would we do without the lake? Dirty towels? Not much of a housekeeper, would you say, Lynn? There's a great deal of work to be done on a farm. To be sure. And yet, I know there are some Dixon County farmhouses which do not have such hand towels. Those help get dirty awful quick. Then parents are not always as clean as they might be. Royal peace, Excellency. But you and Mrs. Rott were neighbors. I suppose you were friends, too. Mm, I've not seen much of her in late years. I've not been in this house more than a year. And why was that? You didn't like her? I liked her all well enough. Farmer's wives have their hands full to Henderson, and then... Yes? It never seems a very cheerful place. No, it's not cheerful. I shouldn't say she had the homemade meal. Well, I don't know if Wright had either. Well, you mean that they didn't get on very well? No, I don't mean anything. I don't think a place be any cheerful as the John Rock Spring in it. I'd love to talk more about it a little later. I want to get a lay of the things upstairs now. Hey, I suppose, Miss Peters, whatever she does out here will be all right. You know, she was supposed to take some clothes for her, a few little things, you know. We left in such a hurry yesterday. Yes, but I would like to see what you take, Mrs. Peters, and keep an eye out for anything you're not used to.
if she was going to quilt it or just not. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> right. didn't do much up there, did it? Hmm. Well, let's go out to the barn and get that clear. Long. There was a man around last year who stole a canary's teeth, but I don't know 
what she put for us. Maybe she did. She used the same rope to do this, so. It's funny to think the birds here. But she must have had one or thought that she was a cage. I wonder what happened to her. I suppose the thing could pass up to her. You know, she didn't have a cat. She's got that feeling some people have about cats and afraid of them. My cat got in her room one time and she got real upset. That Becky was like that. Queer, ain't it? And look what she's full of. Oh, one leaf to both parts. Looks as if someone has been rough with this. I wish they're going to find any evidence they do about it. I don't like this place. But I'm awful glad the plane is being failed. It would be long. I'll tell you what I'd do with you, Miss Peter. I wish I'd come over when she was here sometimes. I uh, wish I had. Of course, you know I'll forbid me to leave the house and your children. I could have come. I stayed away because it went to the woods. That's why I ought to have come. I've never liked this place. Maybe it's when it's down in a hollow and you don't see the end of the road. I don't know what it is, but it's a lonesome place and always was. I wish I'd come over to you, Miss Crawford, sometimes. I can see now. Well, you must be beside yourself, Mrs. Bell. You probably just don't see how it is with other people until something comes up. Not having children makes less work, but it makes a quiet house, and we're quite out to work all day, and no company when you did come in. Did you know Bill and Rocky? decided whether she was going to quilt it or knot it? We think she was going to knot it, Mr. Henderson. Well, that's interesting, I'm sure. Was the bird close? Well, we think the cat got to it. Is there a cat? Well, not anymore. They're superstitious, you know. They leave. No sound at all of anyone having come from outside. Their own rope. Now, let's go up again and go over it piece by piece. It would have been someone who knew just as they had. We like the bird. She was going to bury it in that pretty box. When I was a girl, there was a boy with a hatchet for my eyes. No, not what it like a bird. Just think that. 
neck choked the lock out of his head. We don't know who killed him. Who knows? There have been years and years of nothing that a bird is saying to you. Still, after the bird was still, I know what stillness is. When we homesteaded in Dakota, my first baby died. Right after he was two years old, and we didn't know evidence. How soon do you suppose they'll be through looking for the evidence? I know what stillness is. Because all Oh, I wish I'd come over to see Minnie Foster sometime. That was a crime. That was a crime. Who was going to punish that? My innocence was on. I'm not a known human to help. I know how things can be for women. Peter, I tell you, it's queer. We live close together and we live far apart. We all go through the same thing. It's just a different type of the same thing. If I were you, I wouldn't tell her to be sorry. Tell her it ain't. Yes, they're not very dangerous things the ladies have picked out. No, Mrs. Peters doesn't need supervising. For that matter, the sheriff's wife is married to the law. Ever think of it that way, Mrs. Peters? Not just that way. <laughs> married to the law. Uh, hey, can you come here for a minute, George? We ought to take a look at these windows. Oh, windows. We'll be right out, Mr. Hale. Henry. At least we found out she was not going to quilt it. She was going to, what do you call it, lady? 